Hello, everyone. Welcome to our paper presentation. I'm Mu Chao Yi. This is a work jointly conducted with Suan Che, Ya Qing Wang, Jun Yu Luo, Cao Xiao, and Feng Long Ma. And the title of our work is Map Path Augmenting Health Risk Prediction Via Medical Knowledge Paths. And Map Path is the name of our model and our contribution is improving the health risk prediction performance by using the medical knowledge graph, medical knowledge paths from the medical knowledge graphs. And our presentation consists of four parts. In the background part, I will talk about the data and the, and the risk prediction tasks. In the motivation, we will talk about what motivates us to do our work. And next, we will talk about the model architecture and the experimental results. Okay, first, the data that we use here is the electronic health records. And in the button, there is a example of the EHR we use. And by definition, EHR health EHRs are the comprehensive historical records of patients that contain their symptoms during their visits. And in the example here, the patient has six visits, and during each visit, their symptoms are encoded by several ISD-9 codes, a system of the medical codes. And in math formulation, we denote the EHR of specific patient as X. X equals to X1 to XT, where T is the number of visits, and XT is the T visit described by several medical codes from the ISD-9 coding systems. And in our work, all the H are encoded by the ISD-9 codes. Next, when we are having this data, a question that we are curious about is, Will the patient suffer from kidney disease given their EHR? And this is an example of the health risk prediction. And by definition, health risk prediction is the problem of given the EHR data of a patient, we would like to know whether the patient will suffer from a target disease, such as a kidney disease in the example in the future. And in math formulation, Given the EHR input X and its label Y, Y equals to 0 or 1, we want to design a health risk prediction function F such that F of X is as close as to Y. And for the motivation, existing work in consists, incorporates prime medical knowledge, a knowledge graph on the web to enhance the representation learning of the medical codes. The problem is the overlapping codes between the patients and the entire knowledge, knowledge graph is small. So using the whole knowledge graph will introduce noise. And we should use the knowledge graph in a personalized angle, extracting a personalized knowledge graph for each patient. And here's the way we do it. And the framework, of map path is shown on the right, and we introduce personalized knowledge graph to provide personalized prediction in this pathway, and we use the pathway of from knowledge personalized knowledge graph to progression path to make the reasoning, and personalized knowledge graph is extracted from the large medical knowledge graph by the medical codes in the patient's EHR data and the target disease codes. And the knowledge graph that we use is SAPMAP, and we abstract a personalized knowledge graph in the following steps. First, we convert ISD codes to the SAPMAP entities, and then we abstract the path that links the input ISD codes and the target disease and the relationships that we consider are as follows. Then we can get the PKG and the detailed illustrations that we map the ISD codes of the EHR data and the target disease to COIs. 
and from the set map, we abstract a subgraph from the set map that contains this ice state codes. And with these two information, we abstract the disease progression path where the input COI is the date ice state codes in the data, the target COI is the target disease nodes, and the internal COI is the nodes from the subgraph. And we can use this progression paths to encode the graph and then we can learn a representation of PKG for better performance. We will discuss this that later. And like the previous work, the first thing that we do is encode the EHR into a patient EHR representation. And MapPath is a general framework which can use any existing EHR encoder as is EHR encoder to represent the data x. So we can get a representation s equals to fe of x, where fe is the EHR encoder that we use. And later, we want to learn a good graph embedding. And the way we do it is first, we learn the type specific information for different types of nodes in the graph. And by having this information, later we use the multi-hub message path passing to update the node embeddings in the personalized knowledge graph. And the way we do it is for a node, there are, there are multiple paths that pass the node, and we want to learn the attention weights for different paths, and then we can use the different ways to dis distinguish the importance of different paths. And when the source information source nodes propagate the information from the path to the node that we are interested, we can then update the node embeddings by aggregating the information from different paths. And the way we learn the Attention ways includes transition matrix based attention TA and relational self attention SA. The detailed information of these two mechanisms can be found in our paper. And then we update the pre change node features H1 to HN into the updated H1 prime to HN prime, where N is the number of nodes in the PKG. Okay, with the follow with the information above, the next thing we do is make prediction. And given the EHR embedding S and the node embeddings H1 prime to H M prime, we first apply the attentive pooling to get a comprehensive graph feature G. And then we concatenate G and S together and we conduct the prediction by putting them into a fully connected layer. And this is what we did in the first pathway. And in the second pathway, we do the explicit reasoning by using the progression path we learned just now. And given the progression path abstracted from the PKG, we can decode all the K paths in the graphs, where K is the number of nodes in the paths. And we can select the path with the high highest attention scores as the progression path that help us make the model prediction. And these paths can be used as the model interpretation. And this is so much about our framework. And in the next part, we're going to talk about our experiments. And in experiments, we conduct our experiments in three data sets, the heart failure data set, COPD data set, and kidney disease data set. And these are the statistics of the data set. And here we are showing the results of person performance comparisons. And the evaluation matrix we use here is our AUC and F1 scores. 
And for the base models, we use eight different types of base models and their performance on these three data sets are denoted as vanilla and the vanilla results. And our map path has two variants, and map path TA and map path SA. And from the results, we can see that in most cases, our map path framework can help us achieve the highest AUC and F1 scores on three data sets. And so it just shows that the map path can use the PKG to improve the performance of base model, and it can help us achieve better performance in the risk partition task. And another thing that we find is that we can see that from the map path SA can achieve the highest average performance in AUC and F1 score in all three data sets. It just shows that SA is a better mechanism than TA to learn the attention ways for different progression paths. Okay, here's the ablation study results. You can see that by re and the model here we use is the map path assay with the LSTM encoder. By removing each component here, we can see that when they are put together, we can have the best performance. It just shows that each of the component is essential and we, our design is reasonable. And finally, we can use the progression paths to do the interpretation. And here's a case study result. Here, we are having a EHR data of a sixth visit, and the target disease is heart failure. And we abstract all the three hub paths from the knowledge graph. And the first node are all the, no, all the symptoms that appears in the in the EHR data. And the last node is the target disease nodes of the heart failure. And the middle ones are the ones that comes from the knowledge graph. And by use and we can learn a attention weights for this these paths. And the paths with the highest with the higher attention weight, we can see that they are more it's a more likely progression path for the patient to get the disease. And that's how we can use this data to interpret the prediction that we made. And that's so much of our paper presentation. Thanks for watching. Thank you.